So welcome, I'm super excited. We've got a glutes, chest, tricep workout. You're going to need a circular hip band or two. You're going to need some dumbbells. Now, if you've got ankle weights, grab them. I will demonstrate with and without ankle weights, but if you have them, get them because it's gonna be really great for one of our glute exercises. If you're just popping in, say hello. I'm so glad that you're here. And if you're watching this in playback, leave a comment below. And if you wanna join us for a live workout, just go to hollyperkins.com forward slash free workout and join us live on a Saturday. Let's get it started. Feet separated, take a big inhale up. Stretch way up out of your waist, exhale it out. Two more just like that. Inhale, when you inhale up, reach, reach, reach. Lengthen up to the ceiling because I want to cause that transverse abdominus to start to activate here. So reach up, don't just inhale, big reach. Exhale, let's come into some spinal rotation. Squeeze the glute of the leg that you're turning away from. Let your arms just naturally flow around you very in a very relaxed way. Squeeze your glute as you're turning away. Squeeze that glute, okay? Because that helps to create a foundation for your spine so that your spine is a little bit safer to rotate around. This is just such a good move to release any stickiness through the spine and the hips. Get your abs activated, get you moving. It feels good. Let's do one more and relax. Feet together, truly together. Lower your center of gravity. Find something to stare at in front of you on the floor. Bring your weight over onto your right leg and find your balance. It's gonna take you a moment to settle in. Make sure that you keep your standing leg bent. Once you settle into your balance, use your arms if you need to. I want you to look around your floor, increasing the distance that you are looking until it destabilizes your balance. The whole goal of this exercise is to intentionally destabilize your own balance. Look around, then I want you to look up and look down. Look all around, as Dr. Seuss might say. Keep your knee bent and I want you to look around and very intentionally cause your balance to get thrown off. The more you have to tap down to catch your balance, the better you're doing this exercise. Because I want you to look around and lose your balance. It's when you lose your balance, all of your muscles start to fire up and that's when they get stronger. That's when they get better. It's an incredible preparatory exercise. Let's switch legs. Feet together, bend your knees. Lower your center of gravity first so that your standing leg is bent. Keep that knee bent. Really important to activate the hamstring. If you notice that you wanna lock out your knee on this exercise, that's because you are quad dominant and your hamstrings are not engaging. Force yourself to bend your knee. Look around. You're also gonna feel the arches of your foot grab the one arch of the foot that you're standing on. It's gonna grab, and that's part of the exercise as well. This is an incredible foot health exercise, knee health exercise. Obviously, it's a balance exercise, and it targets that glute medius for hip stability. Such a silly looking exercise if you're just watching this and recording, and I challenge you to get up and do it with me one of the best things you can do every single day if you wanna make sure that you're keeping functional leg length ability and stability. Looking all around, the more you look around, moving your eyeballs and your chin, the more challenging it's going to be. And let's relax, take your feet separated, let's come into a side to side lunge to fire up the hips and get a little uh, range of motion on the inner thighs. So just start with kind of a shallow side to side, Take a look down, make sure that your feet are truly parallel to each other. Push your hips back. Bend into the knee and the ankle. Deeply bend the knee and the ankle on the side that you are moving towards. Once that feels better, let's go deeper, bringing your hand all the way past your toe, sitting deeply. Now throughout the workout, you can move a bit faster than me, you can move slower than me, your workout really should be dependent on your fitness level today, as well as just how you feel today. So if that means you gotta move faster, go for it. If it means you do more repetitions or more weight, go for it. And if you need to go slower and just do your body weight only, that's cool too. This is your workout and I create it so that it's perfect 
for a lot of different fitness levels. Sit super deep, getting those glutes fired up. Two more. And relax, keep your feet wide. And I want you to just turn, okay? Now, make sure that your feet have some distance from right to left between each other so that you've got a little bit more stability. From here, take your arms up over your head and I want you to just drop down and stand up. Super easy. Now you can go faster or slower here, but this is technically a split squat and it's a hard exercise. And so since we're using it as a preparatory move right now, I just want you to do it nice and slow to get the legs firing and to start to open up some range of motion of the hip flexor, that muscle in the front of the hip of that back leg, and just to start to fire up the glute of the front leg. And let's do one more. Now I want you to come down on that knee all the way down, okay? And from here, I want you to turn towards the leg that's in front, bringing your hand back behind to relax on the heel behind you. Take your front hand up over your head and let's hold for a nice stretch. This is what I've coined the world's greatest stretch. Turning towards the leg that's in front, reaching and lifting up to open up that hip flexor. It's just so incredible. And relax, and I just want you to stand up, step forward, and you're gonna bring that other leg back. So we're gonna do the same series, sequence, on the side. Arms up over your head, and let's just drop down and stand 10 to 12 times here. Kinda slow, kinda gentle. This is really more so just to get you prepared for the workout. We're going through a series of movements right now to get you ready for the workout. This actually isn't the workout. Make sure that back leg is really extended so that you start to get some nice activation and stretch through the front of the hip of the leg that's behind, opening up that hip flexor, getting some great flexion on the back foot and toe reaching up super high to the sky to activate transverse abdominis. And if you focus most of your energy on your front leg, we're gonna be firing up the glute on that front leg. One more. And now, come down to your knee, keep that back toe tucked. Turn towards the leg that's in front. Bring your back hand to your heel, front hand to your knee. Just relax into that awesome stretch and then take your arm up over your head. Ah, oh, it's so neutralizing. One of the best exercises, stretching moves you could do, especially on a Saturday. Every day, I do this movement every single day. So much going on here, so good for you. Just really enjoy it. Open up that hip that's in front. and relax, bring your hands forward. And from here, I want you to just extend your back leg into a bit of a runner stretch. Let's just hold for a minute to stretch out that back uh, hip flexor on the leg that's in back. Then you're gonna drop your knee, squeeze your glute of that leg behind, extend your leg, drop your knee and extend. So I want you to really think about extending the leg so that the heel reaches back and squeezing the glute from the bottom here to bring that leg up. Such a great way to open up the hip flexor, but also get the glutes firing. Today's glute workout, I want your hips open, but I also want that glute muscle really activated. One more. And relax. So step forward, step back, come into a runner's lunge. Knee is down and then extend it up and let's just hold for a static stretch for a moment here. Really opening up on the hip of that leg that's back behind so that this hip flexor is getting some gentle opening but definite opening, okay? Then drop the knee, squeeze the glute to bring that leg back up. Keeping both hips kinda low. So you don't want your hips coming up super high, okay? This is really about keeping the hips low so that when you extend back, you're getting an active and dynamic opening on the front of the hip. 
So this is about getting that hip flexor opened in a very active way instead of just a static stretch. I'm not a big fan of static stretching before a workout. And there's science to support that. It reduces the muscle's ability to generate power. So we want all of our range of motion exercises to be active before a workout. Oh, that feels so good. One more. Ah, oh, so good. Okay, and step forward. Stand up. And then I want you to come right back down into a reverse lunge. Switch sides. I'm gonna keep you moving. Bringing your heart right back up, getting ready for the workout. I want you to reach high here. Drive into your front heel at the bottom here to activate the glute. Letting your back knee gently tap down onto the ground right here to continue that opening of the hip flexor. Make this a big movement, moving faster or slower based on what feels good for you today. Getting that heart rate up a little bit and we're gonna get into the workout in just a moment. We're gonna be starting with a circle hip band. Make sure you have that nearby. And let's do one more here. And walk it out. Grab a sip of water, grab your dumbbells, circle hip band. Let's get into the workout. Listen, we are working in supersets today. Two strength exercises put back to back no rest in between, then you're gonna take a short rest after those two exercises. That's a superset. Your job is to complete 12 repetitions for every set. Your weight should be hard enough, heavy enough, that those 12 reps are challenging. If you're limited by your home exercise equipment, do more reps. But ultimately, I want you to use a weight load where 12 reps is hard. First two exercises, let me demonstrate and then we'll get started. Grab your circle hip band, step in. We've got two exercises for the glutes using your hip band. First exercise, lateral band step, feet together, sit down, lead with your heel. You're gonna take 12 steps in one direction and then you're gonna immediately reverse and take 12 steps back. Second exercise, Feet together, knees bent, pause and squeeze, repeat. Pause and squeeze, use something to balance yourself if you need to. Really drive back through the heel and I want you to give me a definite pause here to super squeeze that glute. 12 reps on both exercises. Guess what? My band is too easy for me. I'm moving up in the world, you guys. Okay, you ready? Let's get started. Lateral band first. 12 steps in one direction, 12 steps in the other. If you're new to this exercise, make sure your band is above your knees. If your band is too easy for you, you can move it below your knees, that will make it harder. Feet together, sit down, let's take a big step. Listen, stick your booty back. You want a little bit of a natural curvature in your lower back. You almost wanna feel like you're kind of booty popping. I'll be off camera for a couple of steps. When you hit 12, you're gonna immediately reverse and come back, okay? So you want a natural, neutral curvature in your lower back, and you get there by sinking low into this movement and sticking your booty back, okay? That's what really helps to put the emphasis onto glutes, but onto glute medius in particular. 12 in each direction, and then we're gonna immediately go into that hip extension with a pause, okay? From here, lower your center of gravity. Use something to stabilize you if you need to. Pause on the back end so that you get a nice big contraction. Squeeze in the glute. Here too, little bit of natural neutral curvature in your lower back. You don't want a flat back. You also don't wanna be super hyper arched here either. But once you've got your neutral arch here in your lower back, nothing else changes. Just your leg moves. So there's not a whole lot of upper body movement going on here, okay? A lot of people actually would come more to like this, okay? So it's as if once you've got this locked off, nothing else moves, just that leg, 12 reps with a pause, switch legs. Same thing on the other side. Squeeze and pause, okay. If those 12 reps 
or not challenging, and you don't have a heavier band, you're gonna do 15 or 20 reps. But make a note, because next workout, I'd rather you get a harder, heavier circle hip band, okay? I'm a huge fan of the Spry band. This is not product placement. They have no idea who Holly Perkins is. It's just one of the band companies that I love and use always. Um, the red band is what they consider medium. The blue band is what they consider heavy. Then there's a black band that's considered hard. I generally work with the red and the blue from Spry. Um, another band that's another company that's got good bands is Perform Better. Short break. Then we're going to do our second set here. Same two exercises. If you want a higher heart rate workout, you're going to reduce that rest. But I want you taking a little bit of rest because these are, this is a strength-based workout. This is not a cardio workout. This is not a HIIT workout. This is not a boot camp workout. I want your set to be hard. And if your set is hard, you're gonna need a little bit of rest. Let's go for that second set. Feet together, lateral band step, drop your body weight down. Make sure that you're leading with your heel. You want your feet to stay truly parallel to each other. You don't wanna be opening out your toe as you step to the side. Sit heavy onto your heels. That's gonna help um, shift your body weight a little bit more towards the back. And that, what that does is that activates what we call the posterior chain. It's all of the muscles along the back side of the body. And that's where most of us tend to get really weak, posterior chain. So hips are reaching back, a little bit of that booty pop that I talked about on the first set. You really should feel this a lot in your glutes, whether it's your entire glutes or the sides of your glutes, you really should feel it almost all in your hip structure and your glutes, depending on what your strengths and weaknesses are. Kick back, feet together. So you got a narrow um, center of, ba uh, narrow base, basically bend your knees, give me a pause. If your band is hard, really hard for you, take away the pause. You'll just kick out and come back. Your band really should be such that you could pause for a second, pause for a second, and 12 reps should be work. That's when you know your weight load on any exercise is perfect, okay? Yep, big pause really focusing on that glute, squeezing like crazy without a lot of change through your lumbar spine, lower back. Immediately go into the other side, feet together, always reset, kick it back and squeeze. Keep that heel kind of low. You're not really lifting up, okay? You're really basically pressing straight back, but the heel is going to come up a little bit. So press straight back, Focus on squeezing through the glute. Give me that definitive pause. Oh, it's so good, isn't it? I don't know if it's just me. I'm obsessed with glutes. Those of you guys that know me know it. It's why I created the Glutes Project. For me, there's nothing that feels better when your glutes are really contracting and firing, when they feel strong, when they feel powerful, when they feel tight and lifted. To me, it's just a feeling I absolutely love. It's just my thing. Okay, you can do a third superset of those two exercises if you want. Otherwise, we're gonna move on to the next superset. I'm gonna demonstrate the two exercises and then we will begin together. If you want a harder workout today, you're gonna do three supersets of each two set pair. Superset number two, plie squat with a reverse lunge into a balance exercise, plie squat different than a sumo deadlift. Those of you guys that were at Strength Society last weekend, toes turned open even more, okay? Knees are going out to the side, you're gonna drop, squeeze your glutes at the bottom. This exercise is designed for a heavier weight load. You're gonna want at least 10 pounds here. At least, some of you are gonna be at 30, 35, 40, 50 pounds, okay? Heavy weight load there. Next exercise is a reverse lunge with the knee up. You can do it with or without dumbbells based on what works for you. Feet together. 
reverse lunge, coming into a knee lift. So there's a big element of balance here. You can take away the knee lift if you want and just focus on the reverse lunge with or without dumbbells, 12 on each leg. You ready? Let's start with that plie squat. Heels wider than your shoulders, toes turned open, draw your abdomen in, nice heavy weight. My weight's not heavy enough, so I'm actually gonna shift over to two dumbbells. Um, actually, later today I'm going dumbbell shopping. Wish me luck. Hopefully there will be something in the store. Okay, drop it, squeeze your glutes. So you can always double up with your dumbbells, just kind of crisscross them and hold them however you need to hold them. I like to hold them as a unit as compared to holding them in two hands, okay? I like to crisscross them somehow so that you're holding it as one unit. It condenses the weight load better and it makes it so that your upper body doesn't have to expend any energy holding the dumbbells together. Make sure you squeeze your glutes at the top. Glute squeeze, big glute squeeze. Drive into your heels, keep your chest lifted. Knees are really opening out to the sides and pressing back a little bit. Pressing back behind you, 12 reps. And we're gonna go right into that reverse lunge, knee lift, with or without dumbbells. I will show you some variations. You're gonna do one leg at a time. This is a front leg exercise, feet together. First option, reverse, knee lift. Reverse, second option. Reverse, toe tap. Okay, third option, grab those dumbbells. You can hold them at your sides. You can hold them at your shoulders. Whichever works for you, okay? 12 reps. If you are more challenged by your balance, you can also tap, knee lift, tap, and back. Every now and then, you can just tap down to catch your balance until you're able to just swing right through. 12 reps, same on the other side. Feet together, lower your center of gravity, pick the variation that's best for you, staying on one leg. Now remember, this is a front leg exercise, so you want to be thinking about putting all of your love into that front leg. Give it some love. Give your front leg some positive affirmations. You are strong, girl. You are stable. You can do it. Squeeze your glute at the top, here. So of that leg that stays on the ground, you wanna really squeeze your booty here. 12 reps. This is a good one for getting your heart rate up. And, short break, and then we'll do our second superset. During a break, walk it out, keep moving. I want you resting at least 20 seconds, 15 to 20. And if you're going heavier in this workout, listen, you could be picking up some heavy weight loads and then giving yourself 30 seconds of rest between the superset. In a perfect world, if you and I were in the gym, and I was taking you through a workout, this superset would be so hard, you'd be begging for 30 seconds. So if you don't need 30 seconds of rest, you're not working hard enough with challenging enough weight loads. Doesn't mean you have to move faster. I want you working harder with the repetitions where the weight load is slowing you down because it's so challenging. Okay, second set, you ready? So challenge yourself with your weight load so that it's harder because of the weight and that the weight slows you down. So when I say I want you working harder, what a lot of people out there in the world do is they move faster or bigger or more enthusiastically and they get their heart rate up. That's not what this kind of workout is. I want your weight load to be like, whoa, it's slowing me down. Because then you gotta really work for each repetition. This is a strength workout. I teach strength training. This isn't a heart rate workout. 
You can find lots of other people out on the internet that will take you through that. That's not what I'm about. Drive into the heels, squeeze your booty, and that weight. You should see it, you should feel it. You should have to move that weight. 12 reps, and let's go right into the lunges. So, you get your weight loads right here, your heart rate's gonna be up. You're not gonna have to move faster to get your heart rate up because the intensity of the weight and the exercise is gonna get your heart rate up. You can hear me breathing and my weights actually aren't that heavy, but they are the perfect heaviness for me when you use perfect technique to really get the heart rate up. Swing through, squeeze your glute right here, okay? So, standing leg, squeeze that glute, right? Abs nice and tight, drawn inward. Abs are bracing inward and lengthening you upward. Big knee lift, and you can just adjust that knee lift as you need to until you find your balance or over time, your balance will get better, okay? If you think, oh, I just have terrible balance, I promise you, it's something that you can cultivate. I promise. I'll never forget when I was about 22 or 23. Oh, this is a great story. I used to work out at the infamous Reebok Sports Club on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, right when they opened. Madonna was taking her spin classes there and they were teaching yoga. And it was the first time I started taking yoga. So I went to one of their yoga classes and it was packed with people. And I remember they had us practicing tree pose where you have to stay on one leg. And at the time, I was in great shape. I could go out and run a fast eight miles in Central Park. I mean, I was in good shape. But this tree pose and yoga, I could not balance. And I would get so mad. And I was like, I just don't have good balance as if it's something that's inherent to who you are, right? It's almost like, I just don't have balance, so I'm not gonna do this exercise, and couldn't be farther from the truth. Balance is something you can cultivate. Now, my balance is pretty darn good when I'm in good shape, when I'm practiced. So, if you think you don't have good balance, I challenge you to work on it. And then come back to me in about a month and share your success. Next superset, okay? Yes, our third superset here. We're going down onto the ground for two glute exercises. This is where you're gonna want an ankle weight if you have it, but I'm gonna demonstrate with your circle hip band, and then we're gonna be doing a glute bridge, so you're gonna want a dumbbell nearby, or a smaller weight plate, or you could even use your ankle weight for the glute bridge. So let's go down on the ground. You are gonna want a slightly easier resistance band for this exercise. Down on the ground, let me demonstrate. It is a um, hip extension, leg extension exercise with your band. And it does kind of take a moment to really kind of get the positioning of it. I just wanna move back so you can see me a little bit better. Hands under your shoulders. Tuck one toe under, okay? Tuck one toe under. Your other leg is gonna come up and extend. Dropping down, up and extend. Again, I want you to pause at the top. Now look at my bottom foot. It's tucked under kind of aggressively so that it holds and anchors the band. Second exercise, you're gonna flip over either your ankle weight, which you would take off your ankle, or a dumbbell, we're coming into glute bridge, I want a definitive pause at the top. Give me a really good, long pause. What I found from working with women all these years is that the pause is super productive to help teach you how to perform exercises and help you to feel the muscle that's supposed to be activating and contracting, okay? 
Uh, hip circle around your ankles, hands under your shoulders. Tuck one foot down, let's just say left foot, just to make it easy. Left toe is tucked under to anchor that band. Back leg extends, and that band might shift up on your leg a little bit. Come up, give me a pause, squeeze your glutes like crazy, and down. 12 reps, squeeze that glute like crazy. Squeeze. You actually don't have to come up super high here, right? So your leg is probably coming up just a little above parallel to the floor, okay? Squeeze, I want you to really give me a big, mm, driving that heel up to the ceiling right there so that you feel that big contraction all through the glute. 12 reps, and then we're gonna do same thing on the other side. And relax, you might need to reset your band. I like to set the band nice and low towards my foot, okay? Tuck that toe under, extend the opposite leg back, and here we go. 12 reps. You're probably gonna notice that one leg is better at this than the other. Welcome to upright biped existence. <laughs> upright homo sapien has two legs, makes us a biped, and because of that, we are actually at a mechanical disadvantage to gravity because you're basically a big, huge moving building, okay? So the hips tend to get imbalanced. They tend to get one, one side is weaker than the other, and it could be the leg, it could be the hamstring, it could be any of the hip extensors or rotators. Nonetheless, especially if you're a woman, one leg is gonna be better at this than the other. And short break, flip onto your back. Actually, sorry, not break. We're gonna come into the next exercise, your uh, glute bridge, grab a weight load, whatever that looks like for you, okay? And you can, if you're using a circle band, you can leave it on. If you're using an ankle weight, you can leave it on. I'm just gonna grab my other ankle weight that's nearby, just to demonstrate an option for you guys, because this is actually a really comfy way to weight to load your glute bridge. Heels are about the width of your shoulders, toes are turned open slightly, elbows pressing down into the floor. Come on up, squeeze your glutes, nice long hold, and relax down. Now, I like this elbow position. You can certainly be here, okay? But when your elbows are at 90 degrees and you're pressing your elbows into the ground, it's a really great way. It's actually a physical therapy move, to be honest with you. I learned this in physical therapy when I injured my hip. You wanna really drive your elbows down because it just helps in the way we activate the core, okay? It's changing your upper body. It's also giving you something to work from, to push off from in a really productive way, okay? It also kind of strategically places your hands here I'm literally just putting my thumbs on my ankle weight so that it stays there. And I could probably do it without putting my hands there, but you just, if you're holding a dumbbell, you just wanna hold it, but give me that good pause, you got 12 reps. Now listen, if 12 reps are easy and you feel like you could keep going all day, don't you dare say, oh, that Holly Perkins workout is too easy, because you know what, my friend? That means you need a heavier weight load. Short break, and then we're gonna transition into second set of hip extension. So if your first set was comfortable, grab your heavier band. Place it low around the ankles, down towards your feet, and place that toe, really tuck that toe under so that it can anchor that band. Extend the leg, hands under your shoulders, tummy drawn inward, braced, come on up. Give me a nice big pause there at the top. Nice big squeeze at the top, right there. And relax down, squeeze. Just like when we did this exercise standing, so our very second exercise of this workout is a very similar, it's basically the same movement, but you are standing. So the same rules apply here. You don't want your pelvis to change a whole lot. Technically, the only thing moving should be your leg and your hip. So you wanna use your abs to lock off your spine so that your lower back isn't really changing. 
Okay, 12 reps, same on the other side. And for those of you that kind of have sensitive knees, you probably will feel better if you double up your mat and put it underneath the knee or grab some kind of a cushion underneath the knee if this is a little uncomfortable for you. That's why you'll see me reposition every couple reps because I'm on concrete and a really thin yoga mat. So it's not exactly comfy on that bottom knee, but you know what? Once you find a good position, you just kind of like find that position on the knee and it feels better. Make sure you're giving me that pause. pause. Squeeze your glutes like crazy. Squeeze. So a lot of talk about the glutes these days. And while we all like our glute, glutes on our booty to look nice, there's actually a lot of functional reason to focus on the glutes. Glutes are a really important muscle group. In my world, they're the most important muscle group of all. Your glutes are designed to be the largest muscle group in your entire body. And if they're not, you're gonna have problems. So you wanna make sure that your glutes are strong enough and big enough to actually really be in proportion to the rest of the body so that they fully support everything that you do in your life, okay? Coming into that glute bridge with a pause at the top using either a dumbbell, a weight plate, whatever works for you. I really like using um, an ankle weight opened out if you've got a heavy enough ankle weight. This ankle weight's only five pounds, so it's actually not that much weight. But I will tell you, there is definitely an argument for doing exercises where the weight load is manageable, definitely challenging, but manageable so that you can really get that pause and you can really fine tune your technique. If your weight's too heavy, you're not gonna be able to fine tune your technique. You're gonna be beholden to that heavy weight and inevitably your technique's not gonna be perfect. I'm all about perfect technique because when you have perfect technique, you're actually gonna have a more functional body and you're gonna be able to get more out of every exercise at a lower weight load. Okay, if you wanna do a third superset, go for it. Otherwise, I am moving on to our next superset. We've got our two more supersets to go. We are staying on the ground for our chest exercises here. You're gonna need a, dumbbell, a set of dumbbells, maybe two, because we're gonna do one chest exercise with a heavier weight load and one chest exercise with a slightly lighter weight load. We've got a dumbbell chest press and a chest fly. First exercise, let me demo and then you can start with me. Heavier weight load. You could do this from an exercise bench. If you have one, it actually works better on an exercise bench. Elbows coming out, hands are just outside the midline of your chest. So your thumbs should be in alignment with the midline of your chest. Not too high, not too low. Chest press. Second exercise, you might want a lighter dumbbell, palms facing each other, slight bend in your elbow, opening out. If you're on the floor with me, you're gonna keep the dumbbells off the floor but your upper arm is gonna graze the floor. All right, you ready? Grab those dumbbells. Hopefully you've got some that are somewhat challenging. Start at the top, shoulders press down towards your hips. Really press your shoulders towards your hips. Open those elbows out so that your thumbs are in alignment with the midline of your chest. Elbows are slightly below your shoulders. So if you look over to your right and you look at your right elbow, it should be slightly closer to your hip than your shoulder, okay? So the elbow is below the shoulder in the direction of your right hip, okay? Your elbow is not directly outside of the shoulder. Your elbow is not directly outside of the shoulder. That's not a proper chest press. 12 reps, then we're gonna go right into chest fly. Palms towards each other, press your shoulders towards your hips. I can't stress this enough. When you do that, your lower back is gonna come into a natural, neutral curvature. Your lower back is not flat on the floor. Your lower back is not flat on the floor. You've got a natural 
neutral curvature in your lower back. And that will happen if you push your shoulder girdle towards your hips. That's one of the reasons why I talk a lot about shoulders back and down. Shoulders back, meaning draw your shoulder blades towards each other, back in space, but then also shoulders down towards your hips. Shoulders towards your hips. Push those shoulders down towards your hips, yep. Pausing at the bottom if your weights are not challenging, 12 reps and then we're gonna take a short rest. Now, if you've got an exercise bench, grab it. Um, I'm not gonna demonstrate with my exercise bench today, um, just because our next set of exercises, hold on. Yep, next, our next super set is gonna be back up on our feet, so I'm not gonna bring my exercise bench in, but if you've got an exercise bench, I do love chest exercises on an exercise bench better and in the coming weeks for these live workouts I will announce a bench barbell workout okay so I do like to work in bench specific exercises to the Saturday workouts so if you're interested in getting yourself an exercise bench there are definitely lots of really good ones very economically out there in the marketplace I found my favorite one from Amazon that's just because there wasn't anything really right for my needs here locally. But if you're gonna be working out at home forever, if that's your intended place to work out, I could not stress enough to get an exercise bench. It's such an incredible way to enhance your workout. Back to chest press, here we go. Dumbbells together, press your hips to your shoulders. That's gonna cause your lower back to come into its neutral arch. Give me a pause at the bottom if that weight load isn't Hard. I'm proud to say, after having extensive health challenges, I'm finally at the point where my body is legitimately ready for heavier weight loads. It's an exciting day, about two years later, by the way. My bod's finally ready to get some heavier dumbbells, so I'm really having to work that pause on a lot of my strength workouts. If your dumbbells aren't quite heavy enough, you're gonna give a good pause. And even though it might look like I'm relaxing to the floor, I'm actually not. I'm keeping tension on my chest even when I'm here. 12 reps, turn your palms towards each other, press your shoulders towards your hips, slight bend in the elbow. I gotta tell you, if you wanna know a little secret, this is probably, no, this is hands down my favorite chest exercise of them all. This exercise right here will change your life if you learn how to do it the right way. If you learn how to do it the right way, it is an unbelievable exercise. It will fix your neck pain. It will fix shoulder pain. It will lift your breasts. It will make your biceps look amazing. It will make your forearms look amazing. It's great for your abs. I could go on and on and on and on. It is such a good exercise if you really learn how to do it right. Okay, short break, and we're gonna move on to our next superset. Listen up, come over onto your hands and knees if you're with me. Otherwise, please feel free to do three supersets, a third superset of that series. We're gonna move on to our fifth and final superset, but first we're transitioning from the floor to standing, and I want you to take your time. Tuck your toes under, and I want you to shift back. Let's do a quick foot health move. The closer you keep your feet together and rocking back and forth to bring deep flexion to the toe joints, the forefeet to the forefoot, the forefeet, right? The forefoot of each foot. <laughs> Try to say that plural, whatever that is. But this is so good for foot health. Arch health, ankle health, all of it. Just rocking back and forth. If this is uncomfortable for you, you need to be doing it more than anybody else. From here, I want you to slowly stand up. As soon as you stand up, lift your knees 10 times, please. I don't want you to get dizzy. We don't want you to 
get any kind of dizziness from standing up when your blood flow is hanging out down in your legs. Let me show you our last two exercises for this final superset. We are going into our tricep exercises. We got one of my favorite tricep exercises of all. We're gonna be doing an overhead dumbbell tricep extension, feet together, knees bent, one dumbbell, it comes right down between your shoulder blades, straight up, right down, straight up. I want you to keep your upper arm almost parallel to the ground. Now your upper arm might be a little bit forward here, but try to keep it as perpendicular, sorry, uh, upper arm is perpendicular to the ground as possible so that that dumbbell is moving straight down and straight up instead of back and forward, okay? Second exercise, you need lighter dumbbells. Probably three or five pound dumbbells if you're gonna do this properly. Feet together, bend your knees, neutral arch. Dumbbells come to your knees and you're gonna press straight back and come forward. Press straight back and come forward. This is a straight elbow, shoulder extension exercise for the triceps. So I'm not a huge fan of a tricep extension. I like this exercise a little bit better. Those are your two ab exercises. Let's go. Grab a heavier dumbbell, feet together, knees bent, straight up over, 12 reps. If your dumbbell is not challenging enough for 12 reps, that is your cue to grab a heavier dumbbell. You can pause at the bottom if the dumbbell is light. You can also pause at the top on this exercise. This is an interesting exercise because at the bottom, there's tension on the muscle in the lengthened position, but at the top, there's tension on the muscle here when the muscle's in a shortened position. There's value in both. So on this exercise, you can even pause, 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 pause <laughs> and then don't curse me tomorrow morning when your triceps are really sore but if you give me a pause at the bottom and the top whoo your triceps are gonna feel it talk about getting nice toned triceps in the back that exercise will do it if you add that pause in both places lighter dumbbells shoulder extension bend your knees hands at your knees bring your shoulders back and you're gonna extend and relax now you can rotate your palms back if you want, or keep your hands in what's called a neutral grip, palms facing each other. I actually like that a little bit better for triceps on this exercise, on this exercise. So you wanna think about keeping your elbows straight, but not necessarily locked, okay? And you wanna think about energetically pushing the dumbbells up, up, not Okay, so as if you could push upward like that with the dumbbells is the energy you want there on that back end, right there. Whew, I've got five pound dumbbells and guess what? That little superset of two triceps back to back, if you're really interested in transforming that back of your arm, which so many women are, this superset is powerful, extra powerful if you add that pause at the bottom and the pause at the top on the first exercise. Short break, and we're going back to that second superset. Pausing at the top, pausing at the bottom. Heavier dumbbell, feet together, knees bent, straight up over. Now drop your shoulders towards your hips. You don't want your shoulders raising up towards your ears. Drop your shoulders towards your hips. Go from here. You do not want a flat back. Keep your natural, neutral curvature in your lower back. So there's a reason why the wall behind me is white. That was very strategic, knowing I was gonna be doing these kind of workouts because it really allows you to see the nuances of my body positioning. And so notice how my lower back has that, just a little bit of a curvature. I don't have, I don't even know if I could do it, you guys. I don't have a flat back. You don't want a flat, that's a flat back right there. Oh, you do not want a flat back. You want a little bit of a natural, neutral. You don't want to over arch. You don't want to under arch, okay? Um, you do have to learn which of those you are. If you don't have 
an optimal angle at your lower back. I know I flatten my lower back. So for me, I have to conscientiously arch my back a little bit more. But I would say in the 30 years of working with women, it's about, I would say 50-50. 50% of women have a flat lower back. 50% of women have an overarched lower back. Maybe it's not 50-50, maybe there's 10% that have a healthy lower back. So let's call it 45 and 45, right? Keep your abs nice and tight. Imagine that you're pressing those dumbbells up towards the ceiling once they get back behind you. The energy is pressing up, out through your heels. Sorry, the, well, the, palm, the heels of your palms, basically, right? The outer palm pressing up. 12 reps, even with five pounds, you're gonna feel this. One more, and relax. And if you want to repeat a third superset, go for it, otherwise we're gonna go into a little bit of a cool down here. Let's finish off where we started, coming into just a nice spinal twist. Just let your arms naturally flow around your body, relaxed, squeeze your glutes as you turn away from that foot. This should feel really good to loosen up through your torso, through your shoulder girdle, through your hips. I've got two stretches for you today, and then, if you're here with me live, stick around after the workout for the walking lunge mini workshop, but you do have to be here live to partake in that. If you wanna join us live next time, if you're watching this in playback, Come over to my website, hollyperkins.com forward slash free workout. There's probably a link in the description below this video and you can join us for the walking lunge mini workshop. Two exercises, feet together, stretches. Feet together, if you need to use something for balance, please do so. Bring your heel up back behind. If you need to grab your shoe or your pant leg or grab a belt around your foot, that's fine. Generally what happens when people come into this stretch, they come to here or something like this, especially if your quads are tight. Most women will come into this position. So what you wanna do is you want to tuck your pelvis under, keep your glute contracted, and you wanna bring your knee back while you keep the pelvis tucked under. Super, super, super important, okay? Pelvis has to be tucked under. Pelvis has to be tucked under so that when you come into the stretch, the quadricep origin up here above the hip is lengthened. And then you gotta pull the knee back so that the quadricep insertion below the knee is also lengthened. It's the best way to really fully stretch the quadricep. And this is a stretch you wanna be doing every single day, especially if you're a woman, which you probably are, because my community is all women. Same thing on the other side, bring that heel back, okay? And then tuck your pelvis under, tuck that pelvis under. You might, I even feel a stretch here. You might feel a stretch here if you really tuck your pelvis under, then pull the knee back. Wherever you feel the stretch is where you should feel this stretch. You might feel it tight down by your knee. You might feel it in the belly of the quadricep. You might feel it up in your hip if you're really tucking that hip under. It just depends on how you're tight. And in my experience of working with women, quadriceps are always tight, but we all have our own personality in terms of how the quadricep is tight, right? The majority of people, if you feel this down around your knee, you have really tight quads. And you need to be, you must be doing this every single day. Ideally, you're gonna feel the stretch in the belly of the muscle, okay? Take a deep inhale, we got one more stretch for the triceps and then we will wrap it up, exhale it out. Inhale, bring both arms up. Exhale, bring one arm down towards your shoulder blades. Use the other hand to bring it back and down, back and down. Just to give yourself a little extra tricep stretch. Think about really closing this elbow so that you've got a closed elbow while you're going into the stretch because that's gonna lengthen out this tricep. Same thing on the other side, bring this hand down so that you're really closing the elbow and then use the opposite hand to enhance that stretch. Relax and breathe into it. 
10, 15 seconds-ish, and you can certainly do the stretch a little bit longer after the workout. Thank you so much for joining me live or watching and playback if you are. If you do wanna join us live, I'll see you next time. hollyperkins.com forward slash workout, free workout. Let's take a big inhale up, exhale it out, and I will see you next time.